Hello, space fans, and welcome to another edition of Space Fan News. This week, astronomers find magnetic fields around the supermassive black hole at the center of our galaxy, rotating stars make exoplanets more habitable, and saving Stereo B. Astronomers using the Event Horizon Telescope have found that the supermassive black hole at the center of our galaxy, the Milky Way, has magnetic fields. Now, I'll be honest, I have never heard of the Event Horizon Telescope, but it is a global network of radio telescopes that link together to function as one giant telescope the size of Earth. Since larger telescopes can provide greater detail, the EHT ultimately will resolve features as small as 15 micro arc seconds, which is the angular equivalent of seeing a golf ball on the moon. Now, we need such resolution because a black hole is the most compact object in the universe. The Milky Way's central black hole, known as Sagittarius A-star, weighs about 4 million times as much as our Sun, but its event horizon spans only 8 million miles, which is smaller than the orbit of Mercury. And since it's located 25,000 light years away, this size corresponds to an incredibly small 10 micro arc seconds across. Now I know that's smaller than the resolve size I mentioned earlier, but fortunately, the intense gravity of the black hole warps light and magnifies the event horizon so that it appears larger in the sky. It's about 50 micro arc seconds, which is big enough that the EHT can easily resolve it. Now, the team found the magnetic fields by looking at polarized light at a wavelength of 1.3 millimeters. Now, remember a couple of weeks ago, I told you that polarized light is usually created when it reflects off of something, like a planet's atmosphere. But it can also be created by electrons spiraling around the magnetic field lines, as was observed by the EHT. As a result, this light directly traces the structure of the magnetic field. Sagittarius A-star is surrounded by an accretion disk of material orbiting the black hole. The team found that magnetic fields in some regions near the black hole are disorderly, with jumbled loops and whirls resembling intertwined spaghetti. In contrast, other regions showed a much more organized pattern, possibly in the region where the jets would have been generated. They also found that the magnetic fields fluctuated on short timescales of only 15 minutes or so. Next, now we're always talking about exoplanets on Space Fan News, and one thing you're always hearing me say is that one of the most important characteristics an exoplanet should have in order to harbor life is that its orbit should be within a habitable zone such that liquid water can be present. <laughs> ugh, ugh. I say that so many times, it's in my dreams. Well, folks, it turns out that's not all it needs. A team of astronomers led by Colin Johnstone at the University of Vienna have developed a model showing that a rotating host star is also very helpful in getting a planet habitable. Now, when a terrestrial planet forms inside a gaseous protoplanetary disk, it can accumulate a significant amount of hydrogen gas surrounding the planet itself, which causes the planet to bear more similarity to a mini Neptune than to Earth. Now, before the planet can become habitable, it's got to get rid of this enormous primordial hydrogen envelope so that an appropriate secondary atmosphere can form, one hopefully that might be more friendly for life. So, how can a planet get rid of this huge hydrogen blanket? The primary process for shedding a hydrogen atmosphere is thermal mass loss. As the planet's upper atmosphere is heated by X-ray and extreme ultraviolet radiation from the host star, the envelope evaporates. The model developed by the team tries to illustrate this evaporation process, and they came up with four different scenarios, cases A, B, C, and D. So case A starts with an initial atmospheric mass of one ten thousandth of the Earth, not very much. The entire atmosphere in this case evaporates quickly regardless of the rotation speed of the host star. Now in case B, with an initial atmospheric mass of one thousandth of the Earth, the entire atmosphere evaporates but the time scale is much shorter if the stellar host is fast rotating as opposed to slow rotating. In case C, with an initial atmospheric mass of one hundredths of the Earth, if the stellar host is fast rotating, in the entire atmosphere evaporates on a short time scale. If the host is slow rotating, very little of the atmosphere evaporates. And finally, with case D, with an initial atmospheric mass of one-tenth of the Earth, very little of the atmosphere evaporates, regardless of the rotation speed of the star. So, rotating stars help make a planet more habitable. So remember, orbit a habitable zone? Check. Rotating host star? Check. Maybe life then. Who knows? Finally, remember last week I told you about the Solar and Heliospheric Observatory 
celebrating 20 years in space? Well, all is not well in solar space telescope land because last October 1st, astronomers lost communication with one of the two spacecraft of the Solar and Terrestrial Relations Observatory, or STEREO mission, just as the spacecraft was about to orbit around the other side of the sun. Now, as its name implies, STEREO is a pair of two identical spacecraft orbiting the sun, and it was launched in 2006. Known as STEREO A and B, or STEREO ahead and behind, it was behind that astronomers lost contact with. The orbits of the spacecraft are at 1 AU, the same distance from the sun as Earth, but they travel around the sun at different rates than we do, and right now they are both behind the sun. The dual nature of these spacecraft allows us to gain insights into solar activity by providing observations from two angles, giving us an idea of the third dimension of solar activity, and we have a great many 3D pictures of solar activity as a result of stereo observations. So earlier this year, astronomers lost contact with stereo behind. They were preparing it for the long radio silence that it would experience when they went behind the sun, and that's when they lost contact. They weren't too worried, though, because there is a hard reset timer on board that basically keeps rebooting the spacecraft until communications are restored. The timer lasts three days, and when the spacecraft went into a hard reboot, they waited. Then, after three days, they heard it for a bit, but the signal was very weak, and then it went away completely. That was the last time they heard from Stereo B. From the small amount of information they did get, though, the Stereo team was able to extrapolate the most likely case for where the behind spacecraft is and what it's doing. The telemetry showed that the Inertial Measurement Unit, or IMU, which tells the spacecraft if and how fast it's rotating, failed in a way they didn't expect. The bad IMU told Stereo B that it was spinning, even though it wasn't. Now, since the bad IMU thought the spacecraft was rotating when it wasn't, it keeps firing its thrusters to try and stop it, which causes it to rotate. NASA is continually trying to get into contact with the spacecraft in the hopes the rotation may allow a chance communication. This recovery will be fraught with challenges, but it will only get easier over time because the spacecraft is on an orbit that is similar to Earth's, but it's lagging behind, and Earth will eventually lap Stereo B in 2023, meaning that the spacecraft gets closer to us every day that passes until then. But here's what's cool. In the meantime, in 2019, Stereo B will be far enough from the sun that we could image it directly with Hubble and figure out the rate of spin. Hubble to the rescue! <laughs> So here's hoping they can save Stereo B. Well, that's it for this week, Space Fans. Thank you all for watching. And as always, keep looking up. Okay, well, as you've noticed, I've got my new uh, green screen studio here. I can, uh, I can do all kinds of cool things here in, in, uh, in my little room now. I know that my hair is kind of glistening from the, from the green screen, but at least I can, I can keep doing this. And I'm hoping that this is a slightly better uh, production format and what your uh, slightly higher production quality than what I've been putting out before. I, will, I only I am striving to make it better though. So anyway, I want to thank all of the Patreon supporters again for supporting Space Fan News. Uh, looks like I'm back with Hubble Hangouts coming up the, starting this week, and I'll be back also next year. Uh, and uh, also starting a lot of new content coming up in 2016. So I hope you guys will watch and, and stay tuned on this channel. Lots of cool stuff's coming. Uh, vlogs, I've got new series starting. Uh, lots of live events I'm going to be doing. So I hope you'll check in a lot. Anyway, talk to you later, folks.